It's not often that a product comes around that totally just changes the game, and I absolutely hate it when people just throw around that kind of nomenclature, but this, this might be one of them. This new Neonlux 2400B is a 2400 watt bicolor LED that competes directly with tried and true HMIs, which have become synonymous as the industry's go-to for high-powered daylight fixtures. Also, you can plug it in straight into the wall. It wasn't until I saw the insane output and tremendous attention to detail for myself, and that's when I had a total Oppenheimer moment as I thought of how this light completely changes our approach to using high-powered fixtures. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. All right, so that may have been a little dramatic, but I truly believe that this is a huge step forward in LED technology. And I don't often get this excited over a new piece of kit, and I actually really used to dislike bicolor lights because you'd always sacrifice output and they never took the planking curve into account, but that's all changed. And keep in mind that this is probably the most powerful light you can plug into a regular household socket and will pull just over 20 amps of power. The final release will ship with two different power cables. The first one will include a smart switch that limits the power draw to either 15 amps or 20 amps. The 15 amp limiter is for older homes or locations that don't have access to a turning amp circuit. And the 20 amp limiter actually keeps the power draw right under 20 amps, so you can be sure that you won't trip any breakers when hair and makeup decides to plug in and charge their phone. Just kidding. Not really. The other cable will include a bare end so that you can put whatever connector you want, such as a beach stage pin or a hospital grade Edison plug. When you go this route, you'll get the maximum output and full power draw at around 20 to 21 amps. It's also important to note that when you use the 20 amp limiter, you'll be utilizing 94.6% of your maximum output. So it's up to you whether you prefer having that extra 6% or assurance that your breaker won't trip. The 2400B brings many of the improvements found on the 1200B, like the dovetail ballast clamp, the angled yoke for an extra 15 degrees of tilt, which is helpful when you're using larger modifiers. And one of my favorite features is that when you release the disc brake on the yoke, the head maintains its position, so it just doesn't drop under its own weight. This not only makes tilting much, much easier, but also more accurate when you want to lock its position. It's IP55 rated, which means it's dust and water resistant, so it can be used in light rain. And the NL mount also has electronic contacts, so it can detect which modifiers you're using. At the moment, I only have the 45 degree medium reflector, but there will be a new wide, medium, narrow, as well as a new Fresnel specific to the 2400B because the COB is so large. The current 1200 Fresnel will work, but it can't be adjusted beyond full spot. Another great little detail is the diagram that's laid on the top lid of the case so that you know how to pack everything at the end of the day. This is an amazing foresight since you'll often receive your kit back absolutely just stuffed inside of the case, which also puts a lot of unnecessary wear and tear on the foam inserts. Speaking of wear and tear, our equipment often takes a beating out in the field, and one way I help keep my gear protected is with these great little pouches, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Cord Bag. Cord Bag makes really high quality storage and organizational tools, and when I say these are some of my favorite pieces of kit, I'm not lying. These little pouches are great for keeping your gear organized and easy to find, so I literally bring at least one to every job I'm on, whether it's to carry media, batteries, or even hard drives to offload to. They're super functional and have a Velcro strip right on the front to add your own labels or patches, a tactical hook on the back so that you can clip them to just about anything, and PALS webbing on the back so you can use it just like any other Molly accessory. So I recently ran a Spartan race with my dog Winnie and I actually used a small cord pouch with the Molly buckles on Winnie's harness to carry some recovery snacks the entire way. She did great by the way, she even got her own medal. Another great hidden little feature is the AirTag pocket right inside the mesh zipper so that you can keep track of your high value pouches. The holidays are coming up and these also make great gifts for your other filmmaker friends. I know we can be the worst people to shop for, so if you're interested in picking some up, now is the perfect time because Cordbag is running their biggest sale ever for Black Friday, which ends on Sunday. So get organized and check out Cordbag.
When Analux released the specs of this new light, I thought it was just too good to be true. So I rented an Airy M40 to see for myself. There will be three new reflectors specific to the 2400, as well as the new Fresnel. I only have the 45 degrees, so we set the M40 to a similar beam angle, and the 2400 came out brighter every single time. You can look at the data a few different ways. HMIs tend to run much cooler, depending on the life of the bulb, and we were measuring 1,460 foot candles at around 6,000 Kelvin on the M40. At a similar color temp, the 2400B was reading 1,750 foot candles, and as we set the light closer to 5,600 Kelvin, we gained about 40 foot candles at 1,790. Now keep in mind, this is an LED, so you literally just plug it into a wall, and it's still kind of a difficult concept for my head to wrap around. On the note of output, most HMIs have some sort of dimming capability on the ballast, but I found them to be pretty unreliable and would always just have to deal with some annoying scrim or double net, but since this is an LED, you literally just turn the dial in 0.1% increments, which ends up saving so much time. That brings me to my next huge point, is that once you strike an HMI, it requires a few minutes to warm up to the correct color temp, and that's something that just doesn't happen with LEDs. Even when turning the HMIs off, it's good practice to wait until the lamp is cooled off before restriking again or moving the fixture around, or else you run the risk of damaging the globe. In most cases, an M40 simply wouldn't be an appropriate fixture to use indoors, simply due to the sheer amount of heat that this light generates. We tested our fixtures at 15 feet, and even that is pushing the minimum safe distance for the M40, but when we switched over to the 2400B, the heat just about completely disappeared at that distance. In fact, I had to be standing nearly three to four feet away from the LED to feel the same amount of heat from the HMI at 15 feet, so I wouldn't have any hesitations using this fixture indoors if I had to. Speaking of heat, we didn't really notice the fan on the 2400B at all during our testing, and it's worth mentioning that the buzz of an HMI I think is far noisier. There are plenty of times where you'd want a big high-powered fixture, such as a simple day exterior talking head, or if you're shooting a day interior next to a window and the sun is on the completely wrong side of the building. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so we all know bicolor LEDs usually split their diodes in a set of warm and cool chips, meaning that you generally sacrifice a little bit of output for flexibility of changing your color temperature, and I used, used to just write them off, but the 2400B does something that quite frankly blows my mind. Not only is it bicolor, so you can change your color temperature, and not only does it have a plus and minus green adjustment, so you can fine tune your white point, but it does this while being brighter than an HMI equivalent that's daylight only. Having adjustable color temperature was a huge, considering that if you wanted to warm up an HMI with full CTO, that's an immediate 50% reduction in output because you're filtering out most of your blue wavelengths, but with the 2400B, you only lose about 15% of your output. And not to mention all the time you've saved with having to run to the truck and grab a frame with the specific gel you want. Changing color temps is now super fast and made emulating a specific time of day so much easier. For the longest time, I would only use RGB fixtures for on-location interviews because I was able to precisely match the ambient color temperature with Delta UV to help my key blend in with the environment. But again, that meant I would take an even bigger hit on output since there are even less diodes generating white light. I'll leave the more nuanced colorimetry for Andrew Locke, but TM30 fidelity scores sat at 95 for all my measurements, aside from 2700 Kelvin, which was only a point less. Gamut indexes were all at 101 and 102, so across the board, this light is very, very consistent. CCT accuracy was also very solid, and the only notable discrepancy was at the cooler end of the spectrum, with 6500 Kelvin measuring at around 6300 degrees and 5600 Kelvin measuring at around 5800 degrees. Now, a few hundred degrees is pretty negligible, but every other color temp was spot on with a damn near perfect and consistent Delta UV. I also did a super quick test on how well the Nanolux performs at lower intensities, and with the light at 0.1% at 5600 Kelvin, the unit runs a little bit warmer with a slight bias towards green and begins to cool off 100 degrees every 5%. All right, so you're getting a bicolor light with plus or minus green adjustment, as well as tremendous output, all while being capable of running a regular household 20 amp circuit. 
With bigger fixtures like HMIs, power becomes a huge consideration because they often need three-phase cam lock or a portable generator, but this Nanlux unit can literally plug into a regular socket. You're getting a 4K HMI's worth of light and half the power, so even when you are using a generator, you can power two off the same one that you'd be using for a 4K. What's really mind-bending is when you factor in the costs associated with this level of output. If you are a rental house and were even considering purchasing an M40 kit with a ballast, you'd need to shell out over $23,000. Even renting one with an appropriate generator is at least $800, and not to mention having a solid G&E team that can handle basic distro. Conversely, the 2400B will cost under $7,000, which is nearly three and a half times less that of an HMI equivalent. On the rental side, as an owner-operator, I'd probably market this anywhere from two to 250, depending on how competitive your area is. No jennies, easy setup, and it comes with a great flight case with wheels, so it's really easy to store on the truck. The list of benefits just keeps going. You're gaining the added benefit of bicolor functionality, plus or minus green adjustment, precise dimming, instant strike times, a drastic reduction in heat, not having to wait around for the light to cool down before you can touch it, and the ability to use modifiers directly onto the light itself, all while drawing half the power and not sacrificing intensity. The reduced costs are just icing on the cake, and at this point, this LED is like frosted flakes. They're more than just good. Up until now, the M18 was probably the most powerful light you could run off of regular circuit, and the 2400B just blows it out of the water and competes with fixtures you typically find on much larger sets. Luke Searveld and Gaffer Salon have a few videos out in the wild if you're interested in seeing more about this light, and I'm definitely excited to get this fixture out on more and more sets. Until then, keep using the Force.